what is going on YouTube? I wanted to do a video today talking about one of my favorite consoles of all time. It's not the Super Nintendo, it's not the Sega Genesis, it's not the GameCube or whatever you guys want to think it is. But one of my favorite consoles of all time is actually the Xbox 360. Now, so why do you think that? Or why do I think that anyways? I know right now the Xbox 360 seems to be trending with the closing of the store coming up. And everybody's just kind of going nuts over this. So this kind of felt like a time to do this video. Um, now for all you guys know, uh, Xbox 360 is the second generation of Microsoft Xbox. Uh, I remember that it is American made. So when they came out on the market for the original Xbox, everybody thought they were going to fail. And then when the Xbox 360 actually came around and Xbox has been going ever since then, it was a great accomplishment, especially for, like I said, an American company. Well, we're waiting. Um, at launch, it had two separate cop, two separate kind of package deals. You had your core and you had your premium. Um, the, the core one was the cheapest at 299. You didn't have much, uh, storage on it. It was very basic. And everything like that but we also had the premium which came out with 20 gigs uh, and at the starting price point yeah you had $299 for the core and $399 for the premium so this made it affordable for us Americans especially since uh, the PS3 I believe at launch with their minimum one was $499 so for 500 bucks you could get a PS3 or for almost half that you could get an Xbox 360 now the PS3, I believe, when it came out, it was also a 20 gig for the 4.99 one. Um, but I will just confirm. Yep, the 20 gig was 499. Sorry, I got a little cheat sheet off to the side here. But what made the Xbox 360 so great? So we're gonna first go over obviously the pros of the system. Now the interface when you were going through your main screens was amazing, guys. Um, it was new, it was fresh. Even when the title screen pops up, I should have it here in a second. or I did earlier in the video, it was just, it still gives me kind of goosebumps just thinking about it. But it wasn't only that. So the PS2, the PS3, and Nintendo were doing their own things. Obviously Nintendo was more kiddie games, uh, which has always kind of been their theme. But PlayStation was really taken off again too with their exclusives, but the Xbox had to fire back. So what I did is I grabbed some games over here to talk about. Um, but one more thing just about the interface. I, I loved how when the Xbox 360 had the controller, you could hit your home button in the middle uh, to even shut the system off, shut the controller off, uh, or just hit it to go back to your home screen and go between your settings and stuff like that and then come right back to your game. That was a huge selling point on it. None of us had seen anything like that before, so it was very cool for that. The interface itself, and even to this day, if you ask me, Xbox did a great job on their interfaces. Um, and they weren't confusing, they weren't, and they're were, they were beautiful. I mean, nowadays I have a PS5 and I love the way that the interface is on with too, but for the longest time, I swear that the Xbox had the best interfaces. So we're gonna jump right into the games right now. So before I go into my, uh, some of the games that I grabbed off to the side to talk about, uh, I'm gonna say to this little clip right here, I have a buddy who I reached out to me and we've been talking through Instagram forever, uh, Retro Rangers, would like to tell you some of his favorite games. So I'm gonna give it away to him right now. Hey there, it's Danny from Retro Ranger Reviews. Good friend of mine, Iowa Retro Gamer Dad, asked me to help him out with an Xbox 360 video, and he asked me what my top five essential Xbox 360 games are. So you're about to find out. Enjoy. I absolutely love Guitar Hero and I absolutely love Metallica. You put the two together and you've got a match made in heaven. Now there is an excellent selection of songs from Metallica in Guitar Hero Metallica along with some excellent songs from guest acts like Slayer, Judas Priest, System of a Down, Suicidal Tendencies, Machine Head, Mastodon. 
The reason I say that this game is a essential pick is because you can play it without a dongle. The Xbox 360 guitar controller does not require a dongle and apart from the Wii I believe it's the only one that doesn't. But to be honest the reason why I've put this on the list is it's Metallica. I absolutely love Metallica. I even believe it or not you're gonna hate me for it. Don't mind saying anger. <laughs> When I was a little kid, I used to get my Hot Wheels cars and Matchbox cars and just drive them into each other and smash them up and had a blast. And this game, which is full auto, well, you can really do that in this game with machine guns, environmental destruction. The game is extremely fun. It's pure chaos. It's fun first. No story whatsoever. Just a hooting good time. I absolutely recommend you pick it up. Furthermore, this is a game that you can really only play on the Xbox 360. I have tried it myself on Xenia. My PC is an i7-9700K and an RTX 3080. There's enough power there to run it and it's still unstable. You can't play this game on the Xbox Series X. It's not backwards compatible. So the only true way to play this is on the 360 and therefore it's an essential pick. <laughs> I think if you were to ask anyone what game do they think of when you say Xbox, they're probably going to say Halo, and there's a good reason for that. The, the games, at least the early games, were really bloody good. And this game that you see here right now, well this is Halo Reach. Now the reason why I've picked Halo Reach for this list is because, well A, it's a self-contained story, and B, it's at a point in the Halo series where the gameplay had been refined, the graphics are incredible, the storytelling is incredible, it's an all-around awesome game and a perfect game in the Halo series to dip your toes into if you've never played them before. I highly recommend you pick it up. It's not expensive and it's good fun. As someone who's not huge into massive, complex, open-world RPGs, a game like the one you see on the screen here hits the button perfectly for me, and that's Fable 2. The reason why I like this game so much is the gameplay is actually quite fun and incorporates ranged attacks, sword play, and magic in a very uh, easy to use and approachable way. It's easy to pick up, it's very fun, it's a good game to play if you have a partner that's into the fantastical side of things. You also have a dog that follows you around that can dig up treasure, can let you know when enemies are near. It's, it's such a cool game. It's probably the best one in the series. The third one is really good, but the second one just seemed to have the perfect balance of everything and hit the nail on the head. There's a true sense of progress in the game as well because you start off with very little funds and as time goes on you can do jobs like forging swords, chopping wood to raise funds to then buy properties like caravans and houses that you can rent out for additional income. And the world of Albion is absolutely beautiful, it's great lore, it's an unfortunate thing that there is a chance we're not going to see another Fable game ever again. So in the spirit of keeping it alive, I urge you to go out and pick up Fable 2, it's super cheap, like literally $2 or something. <laughs> Set in Colorado 2012, the same year the game was released, Forza Horizon is the first casual open world racer in the Forza series. While later entries may offer a wider variety or selection of cars and activities, Forza Horizon 1 is more grounded and engaging. The roads are surrounded by unbreakable fences to encourage tarmac driving between events instead of cross-country psycho barrel roll cliff jumping as you'll likely do in the latest entry. Forza Horizon has the most detailed vehicle damage of all the Horizon games. It also features a story mode with bosses to beat and cars to win, kind of like a pink slip race. Not the first festival racing game in existence, but the Horizon Festival is presented in such a believable and visually stimulating way. 
I was in awe as I approached it at night for the first time. You'll see tents set up on the grass around the outside of the main festival, as well as carnival rides and a music stage in the centre. You can customise and upgrade cars as you would in Forza Motorsport 4 and create some truly gorgeous machines. Forza Horizon 1 refrains from shoving a new car down your throat every 5 minutes like Forza Horizon 4 and 5 do, and it gives you space to really appreciate the cars that you already have. There's also an appropriate balance between the cars on offer with a fair few legendary land speed record breakers included here. There's enough to do in this game without it making the racing a secondary feature. You have speed traps, breakable advertisement boards, and barn finds of old forgotten cars around the map. Also, if you haven't noticed by now, the game is absolutely gorgeous. Xbox One and Series X compatible, it's currently around $20 Australian, and it's my pick for number one in my essential Xbox 360 games that you should get. Thank you, IOR Retro Gamer Dad, for having me, and I'll see you guys later. All right, so thank you so much, man, for taking the time and effort to do that part of the video. And now I wanna jump into some of mine. So I can't, you can't talk about the Xbox without talking about some of the exclusives. So one of the main things that I wanted to talk about was yes, this was not the first Halo released on the Xbox 360, but this is the one we spent the most time playing in my opinion. Um, we played through Reach, uh, I think this was the second Halo I played through where I beat every campaign on Legendary. And I was able to play online with my buddies too. Uh, the multiplayer, multiplayer was great. Uh, the story was amazing. I mean, you play this game for the multiplayer, especially. So I remember me and my buddies, hours and hours, I would get off work from the pizza place at like 10.30 at night and go over to my buddies and we play till four o'clock in the morning. Just online team deathmatch. But it was such a great company, um, and I love Bungie, and I love that this series. Um, it really kind of fell off in the recent years, but if you, anybody ever asked me, I think Halo 3 and Halo Reach are prime time Halo, the best Halo games ever. But this was something, too, that surprised a lot of us. So, Devil May Cry had been basically Sony, and it was exclusive. None of us were getting any of these games. And then the 360 came out, and I can't remember, I, I wanna say Devil May Cry 3, was Devil May Cry 3? Was released on it, and that blew my mind, because then when I had a PS2, I loved the Devil May Cry series, I loved Dante, I loved everything that had to do with it. So when it was released with that, it was such a great game, um, and even when introducing Nero. So this one's still fun, I actually every once in a while pop these in, um, with the newer consoles and everything like that, and then the last Devil May Cry series I loved. But it was cool to see a series like this come over to the, yeah, to the Xbox 360. So we can't also talk about Xbox 360 without talking about Fable. So yes, I know Fable was released on the original Xbox. This is actually the anniversary collection which had all the extra stuff that they added later on. But at the time, Xbox was really slacking in the RPG department. And even when it came to the 360, they really didn't have too much turn-based games. I think they later released uh, Blue Dragon, Lost Odyssey, and stuff like that. But at the time, this was kind of the only RPG fix that you could get. And I think on the Xbox 360, they released Fable, and they released Fable 3. And after that, Fable kind of went off the map. Uh, supposedly, rumors are coming around right now that they will make it a return. But at the time, yeah, this was amazing. And especially with the new graphic upgrade um, and everything that went along with it, this was great to have. Uh, and honestly, Fable 2 and Fable 1 are my favorite of the series. And the fact that I was able to go back and play this was amazing. So everybody always talks about Morrowind on the original Xbox. And I remember when the Oblivion came out, we were crap in our pants guys like we had just played so many hours of Morrowind and when this came out and when there was you could ride horses you could uh fast travel better you could go around and do all this other stuff it was absolutely amazing the storyline all the stuff you could do the dark brotherhood everything and the graphic capabilities of it I know a lot of people always talk about how buggy and glitchy these games are but at the time when you were riding your horse through the you know, the countryside, you're running into oblivion gates and everything to do with that. This was absolutely amazing. And the game of the year was awesome. All the DLC, Shivering Isles is still like one of my favorite series for DLC and stuff like that. It was 
an amazing like more 30 or so minutes onto it and this is really just like one of my favorite games of all time i still play oblivion i still play skyrim i still play fallout and stuff like this but this one's still just absolutely amazing game and lastly the only one i want to talk about because i wanted to just talk a little bit more about the xbox 360 in general was you can't this right here so gears of war is still going strong to this day and when this was released on the Xbox 360, people were losing their minds. I remember my first time playing this game and activating the chainsaw and the lancer and drilling through the horde uh, and everything like that. It was just playing with my buddies. Like, it was co couch co-op. You don't see that as much anymore, but this was so fun to play with couch co-op. Um, the great story, all the weapons, and like I said, even when you had your online functions going, this was such an aggressive great game to play online if you didn't have your buddies to play with and they obviously went on to have gears of war 1 2 and 3 i think was all released on the xbox 360 and gears of war 3 was just so i know it's kind of like halo where throughout the years it's kind of gone a little downhill but they have tracked off and did some fun games so if you guys like gears of war tactics if you guys have not played that you need to check it out so we talked a lot about the pros we talked a lot about the games there was one big big thing that was horrible for the xbox 360 and you know you can't talk about all the good and glory of it without talking about the, the little red light that's beaming in everybody's eyes so when i officially bought my xbox 360 it was a while after the release and i got the jasper unit on i think it was the arcade system so it didn't have much memory and stuff on it but it had a newer uh built in i i want to say it was a a cooling system or something like that or they had some th different processing maybe that's what it was but people were, were getting these xbox 360s and getting the, the the infamous red ring of death and so what that meant basically was your you'd get this blinking red light if i if i remember in post edit i will put up an example of it and yeah your xbox 360 was shut off and after that you were screwed guys there was really nothing you can do. You were do it was done for. And they really just... Oh, God. I just... My one buddy, I think, by the time they had come out with the newer units that were better built, like the Elites and stuff like that, I think he went through two or three units. And the one time, I remember we were so mad because we took it apart to try and fix it ourselves to try to figure out what was wrong with it. And we tried to send it in to get repaired, and they wouldn't do it because we had opened it ourselves. And I just remember that we were... like. We're, I'm talk, I was talking about Oblivion because this was, you know, just a couple minutes ago. And that was that was the huge game that we were putting hours and hours into. So his Xbox 360 was almost running on day's end because when I got done playing a couple hours, he'd play a couple hours. And then our other buddy would come over and play a couple hours on his character. And it would just keep going and going and going. And that thing just burned up. And the other big thing was that laser liked to burn rings into your game. So, like, when we were playing Oblivion for those many times... I remember taking a disc out and looking at it, and there was like a, a smudge burned into it. Absolutely insane. So yes, uh, but the thing is, is people always talk about that, but nobody ever remembers too that PS3 also had the yellow light of death. And it was kind of a similar thing where the light would turn yellow, you know, the power thing, and then it would just die too. So they were, they were not without defaults when they were launched. Um, I know over the years the launches for the systems has been better um, There really hasn't been as many issues coming out with the game or the systems when they launched But at the time this was insane. You just bought a console You maybe had it for two months or something like that And then next thing you know it was blinking red and shutting off and would not run And I mean yeah, you could turn it back on and you might get a few more minutes of playing but I remember my one buddy would just You just turn it on and it would get to the home screen and then immediately start blinking red and just would shut off and then just finally talking, the 360, I remember when I got mine, one of the very first con games or games I got for it was Mass Effect. And ho hooking it up and just sitting there playing the game was crazy. The, the graphic, we always talk about the graphic upgrade from, you know, 16-bit up to the next ones with the PlayStation and the 16, Nintendo 64 came out. How everything dramatically increased. But if you ask me a lot of times too with the Microsoft X, you know, the original Xbox to the 360 it was a huge graphic overhaul. Uh, you know, just to prove it, try playing Morrowind and then put Oblivion right next to it. 
and just how crazy things got in a short span of time. And even today, we are seeing such an increase. But I remember playing Mass Effect and just being blown away by the graphics, being blown away by the space exploration and all that stuff, um, and just absolutely blown away by everything it had to do with it. And then on top of that, like I said, my making an Xbox 360 Gold membership, that was a huge thing that a lot of people still kind of talk about to this day was Xbox did charge you for mem your, your subscription fee to be online. Yes, it's a pain in the butt. Yes, PlayStation at the time was free, but I felt like Xbox had a better functionality with their online system. They had better connectivity. They had better networking and stuff like that. And they also did not have the one of the biggest breaches of security of all time. Like I believe it was PS3 where thousands and thousands and thousands of people's personal information was hacked and released. And so, yes, you're paying for your membership, but you're paying for that security, that nice little comfort blanket that, you know, that you're going to have a great online experience. But when, like I said, we were playing Halo, we were playing Gears of War online. It was just, it was a great time. You know, I, I still say this, that it seems like 360 and PS3 was the last, the last age of couch co-op. And I'm kind of excited for someday when my youngest gets old enough to start playing some of these games with me so we can sit on the couch itself. Because, I mean, like I said, it, we're not, you can't really do that as much anymore. There's only single player experiences or you must be online to play with other people it's the only way that you can experience a multiplayer situation so with that being said thank you once again retro ranger for taking part in this video and thank you guys all for watching please let me know in the comments below uh some kind of great xbox 360 memory or some of your favorite games that you used to play on it um yeah and just let me know what you guys think about that xbox 360 so yeah i i, I love the system I still to this day, you know, have fond memories of it. It's one of the one of the consoles besides the PS2 that I probably put one of the most amount of time playing in and just would play for hours and hours on it. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. As always, stay retro, my friends, and I will see you in the next video. Super retro force.